Welcome to the Big 12 Insiders, your Big 12 sports show, presented by Synergy Financial Partners. Now let's go to booming North Texas, home of Studio 73. Here's your host, Brian Hanley. Hey, everybody. This is Brian Hanley here with Cole Carmody. Look, Big 12 Insiders, we have got day two of the media days today, Cole. Pretty fun. You know, we got Deion Sanders. You know, we're going to talk about him. He's absolutely incredible. Uh, we also have you know, the executive director of the college football playoff, Rich Clark. He's came on and did a quick interview with us here. We got a lot of that and more with you today on the Big 12 Insiders. We'll get into all of that and more. Let's get after it. I don't need to be. Welcome to the Big 12 Insiders, your Big 12 sports show, presented by Synergy Financial Partners. Now let's go to booming North Texas, home of Studio 73. Here's your host, Brian Henley. All right, welcome back to Big 12 Insiders. Look, Cole, day two of media days, you know, the Big 12 media days, it was outstanding. The thing that I like most is how often do you get a coach that wants to do as much media yeah. as possible. I'm telling you, Deion Sanders, incredible, Cole, just incredible. <laughs> it, it was it was kind of funny, right? Because at the very end, he, he the, the guy who was running it, running yes. the show said, you've got one question left. Yes. you got one more question. Okay, we're going to go center row. He asked his question, and then he got done, and he goes, oh, we're done? Yes. Uh, we can't keep going? I can sit up here all day. And you know the crazy part is, Brian, he would have. He would have. He would have sat up there all day Absolutely. and taking questions, and it would have gone – Probably about as smooth as possible, and everybody would have asked. They would yep. have never run out of questions. Nope. Everybody loves talking to Deion Sanders. I mean, just right now as we're recording this, you look down the hallway there, down the hallway, down right down the 10-yard line where we are here at Allegiant Stadium, and he's doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with one other person, yes. and there is a group of people just standing around watching him. Yeah. I put it on Twitter. The aura around Deion Sanders is incredible. It he is. just walks around, and it's just different. It's just different. It's just different. Look, I get it. He's a Hall of Fame football player. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that maybe they want him to fail, Cole, at what he's doing. Yeah. For me personally, I like it because I've said this before on several different occasions. He's doing something that hasn't been done. He's trying to do it a different way. Yeah. Now, whether it's going to work or not, that's a different conversation for a different day. But if he can accomplish the goals and can accomplish what he's trying to accomplish doing it this way, I think it's going to be great because you'll see more people do it. Now, the big thing is they got to win. Yeah. You know, all this talk and all the things about Dion are all great. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't win, it literally doesn't mean anything. But just from the outside looking in, if you could just take media days and whatever the aura, whatever the whatever you want to call it, that you could just baggage that up and get that on the field. Colorado would win the conference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes. But again, you got to do the things on the field. So are we going to see that? I don't know. But as far as today, and media days in general, I think Dion won media days. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. I mean, again, when you have that intrigue around that much intrigue around your program, I mean, that, that's what media days is all about. Absolutely. Right. We're sitting here. We're talking about him. Right. That's 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 what Dion wants. There's no such yes. thing as bad publicity in Dion Sanders' world. Now, it was kind of ironic, right? Because right after Dion Sanders, Lance Leipold went. And those two could <laughs> not be more opposite. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I found it interesting, and I want to bring this up because I want to get your opinion on mm -hmm. it. He talked about culture. And Dion Sanders literally asked a reporter, well, what does culture mean? Yes, like, I don't know what culture means. You tell me what culture means. And you know, I think that that's probably a, a comment coming from the heart. Because Deion Sanders is sick and tired about people to asking yes. him about culture. Well, what's your culture? Do you do you have a, a defined culture for your program? Correct. And culture looks different everywhere, right? Yes. We know that there is a culture and a tradition and a atmosphere that is conducive to success at K State, right? right? That that's we know that for sure. Is that is is it that is that there at Colorado? I don't know. But I think Dion is trying to create that. He just does not like to use the word culture for right. whatever reason. Well, I think what it is is Dion wants to do it in a different way. And he's trying to do it a way that nobody's ever done it before. Yeah. He's and he said it in the press conference and he said it several different times before. He looks at it as a professional mm -hmm. at the professional rank. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying to build that type of culture at Colorado. I've got all these guys that have all this NFL experience coaching and I want to build that culture at Colorado. Now, from the fans perspective, you look at it and you're like, hold on, Cole. Um, Colorado has been absolutely awful for yes. the better part of two decades. Right. <laughs> How are you going to build this culture overnight? Well, the transfer portal, number yep. one, is one way. 
Uh, it didn't necessarily work last year, although going from one to four wins to me is a win. Yeah. But it wasn't everything that it was it was put out there to right. be because you could see Colorado's roster was bad. Yeah. Bad offense and defensive line. But if he can bottle up, like I said, what he bring what they bring to the table as far far as charisma um attitude if they can bring all of that into one i think it's going to be something really special is it going to translate to wins i I still don't know though cole i'm just not sure well it was interesting because he did not talk about his players he sure didn't i mean for the first what five six seven minutes yeah he didn't and now granted it's because nobody asked and i understand that but every other coach it feels like the first thing in the opening statement hey we've got i'm excited we're happy to be here i'll take questions first question hey what about your quarterback hey what about your running back right there were so many questions and there were so many topics that were around him. Correct. And every other school here, you know, Arizona football, they got a new coach, but still Arizona. Mm-hmm. And you think about all these other schools, Houston, they got Willie Fritz, but it's still Houston. Yes. Well, we see Colorado and it's like, oh, it's not that Colorado is going. Right. It's that Deion Sanders is going. Correct. And Deion Sanders is Colorado football right now. And yes. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing for the conference. The mm-hmm. thing I worry about, though, is what happens if he doesn't succeed? Because yeah. if he doesn't succeed, he's not going to stay. Right. They won't fire him, but he'll leave. He'll leave. Yes. And so what happens to Colorado then? Because right now it is Deion Sanders' football program, not the football at Colorado. That's correct. And I don't know how that is going to impact this year, how that impacts wins and losses. But he really kind of felt that today. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he didn't once talk about his athletic director. He didn't nope. talk about how much he loves Boulder and, nope. and the town and I don't, I, I, it just is a, it's a strange vibe. Right. And if they win, I'm sure those conversations will be had. Right. But right now, I think he's still trying to win over public opinion to make sure that people support him and what he's doing. Yeah. He's trying to win over outside of, because he said it on other occasions while he loves Boulder. He loves athletic right. director. He's loved that. Today, it was almost like he was selling the Big 12 on him. Yeah. And it, he knows that he is the Colorado's football program right now. So he was trying. Now, again, like you mentioned, first five minutes, nobody asked a question about (laughs) his football team. So he didn't answer any questions about his football team. I think other maybe seasoned coaches can find their way back to the football team, regardless of what question you ask. Well, he didn't, Yeah, you know, and, but that's also the selling point of going to Colorado. And even if he, he, if he moves on into the future, that is the selling point of Colorado is I get to go play for Deion Sanders. So you can say, Colorado, it's beautiful. The campus, and it is beautiful. You can say the football program is great. I'm going to play for Deion Sanders. That is going to be the selling point. And today, Cole, he sold that. Well, it was, right? And and he, like I, I made the comment to you, we're sitting right there. He seems like an amazing car salesman. Correct. I mean, that, that's what he is. And he talked about it. He's been on all sides. He's been on the coach yes. side. He's been on the player side. He's been on the parent side. Yes. And so he understands what the recruiting process looks like. I, I thought it was fascinating, too, when he brought up the amount of freshmen he that he brought in last year and that played. We say 13 of 17 true mm-hmm. freshmen played last year. Yes. It felt like not only was he trying to recruit the media, but he was also recruiting potential high school kids he who was. were out there watching, saying, hey, he you was. come to Colorado, you're going to play. He has come, uh, he's approached the media days here completely different than any of the other coaches. He walked in, he was wearing a sweatshirt with a little suit jacket with and, and with a chain and sunglasses. Yes. The That's typical right. Deion Sanders <laughs> looks. That's what it is. He's, he's unique, and um, it, it, it makes – this event more fun to cover Mm -hmm. and it makes the intrigue to the conference that much better because last year it wasn't about Deion Sanders in the Pac-12 this year it's about Deion Sanders in the Big 12 yes and how is Colorado going to respond to you know different competition I won't Mm -hmm. say better because the Pac-12 was good last year it was but different competition I I'm fascinated by it and you know they've got some good players and if you didn't if you didn't know anything about Colorado you wouldn't even know they had a football team you just think Deion Sanders was the guy that is correct (laughs) That is correct. It, it, the thing about it is, is like I said, it's it's all going to come down to wins. Mm-hmm. Do, does, do they win? You know, we can talk, and, and we've been talking here about, you know, his charisma and how the program is him. Nobody's going to care in December if they're four and eight again. Nobody's going to care. And here's the thing. Everybody will be right, Cole, is that saying, look, what you're doing isn't working. You know, and you could say, well, he's got to turn around a program. Uh, Stop that. You can turn around a program overnight with the transfer portal. So I don't want to hear that it's going to take all this time to to build a program. No, not now. It doesn't take that time. You can turn it around immediately. And I gave him a pass for last year. First time, big time college football. 
uh, big, the conference was better, like you mentioned. Pac-12 was a lot better than what the people anticipated, yep. and it just was. They didn't have an offense or defensive line, nope. so you can't win like that. So I understand. Having said that, no passes this year. No passes, Cole. Nope. You know, I, I have said it many times. I'm a Dion supporter. I want it to work. I want him to succeed. Having said that, you've got to succeed. You can't – it can't just be, you know, all this bravado with nothing behind it. And, you know, it can't just be, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, and then we go out and win four games again. Because, number one, I don't think they're going to fire him because as much money as Boulder and mm. the university makes from him, just having them there, they would be idiots to right. fire him. But at some point, you got to win. You got to win. just got to win. And, and teasing our next segment, can you imagine a Deion Sanders in the college football oh, playoff? Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? Jeez Louise. <laughs> I mean, you tell – now, here's a good question, though, Cole. Think about it if it comes down to an Oklahoma or a Colorado or like a Texas and a Colorado, and they both have nine and three records. Colorado. That's what I'm saying. Colorado. Because they will say as big a brand as Texas is, they're not hotter right now than Deion, Deion Sanders. Sanders. It is not, that would not happen, man. I'm just saying. And there's going to be people that disagree with this, but they would take Colorado because the TV executives know. Hey, man, I, I want what's hot right yep. now. I don't care how many fans that we're going to lose in the South and Southeast by not having Texas. How many more fans are we going to gain around the world? Not yep. just the country, the world, because we have Deion Sanders in the college football playoffs. So what I hear is you're picking Colorado to make the college football playoffs. I am not doing that. <laughs> I am not doing that. I, I will do this. I will say that he's got to win eight games for this to be successful. Wow. I don't even say that, okay, you have a 6-6 six and six record. No. For it to be what they're – what they're selling. Yeah. Now, what they're selling, if they're not selling this, then I could say, you know, six and six is fine. They're selling dominance. And that, what he always talks they about, going to be dominant. I want to be dominant. Well, go be dominant. Yep. Dominant, again, you could say, well, dominant's not eight wins, but coming from where they came from, I'll give you eight wins. And then I'll say that what you're doing is working. You go out there and win six. No, no, it's, it's not working. It's fine. Don't get me wrong. It's fine, but it's not what you're selling. That's all I'm saying. It's just not what you're selling. Big B, I think we have a storyline to follow throughout the rest of the college football season. I already can't wait. I already can't wait. Yeah, I'm ready. So, well, everybody, we're going to take our first quick break here. We're going to come back. Look, we got a quick interview with the CFP College Football Executive Director, Rich Clark. He came on and joined us today to kind of clarify some things about the Big 12. Uh, you guys are going to want to hear this. We'll be right back after a quick word from Synergy Financial Partners. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. At Synergy Financial Partners, the vision is to build the world's largest consumer financial education and empowerment company. Synergy doesn't just offer you a financial plan. At Synergy, the goal is to help you find your best financial future. Learn more at SynergyFinancial.com. Welcome back to the show. Let's return to Studio 73. All right. Welcome back to Big 12 Insiders. Today we have the commissioner, or not the commissioner, I guess the executive director yeah, of the college football playoff. I appreciate your time today, sir, Thank you, for taking the time to, to meet with us. A couple of quick questions here. Just the first one. You know, there's a lot of Big 12 fans out there that are a little nervous. You know, they saw what happened last year with the college football playoff. And there's rumors that are going around right now that maybe the selection committee, there's already a number of teams that are in going to get those bids already. And, mm. and I think the thing is, is a lot of Big 12 fans would just like to hear and, and be reaffirmed, number one, the process, but just be affirmed that, you know what, the, it, it's not what you think. I know there's a lot of things that go out on Twitter and the right, Internet, right. Yeah. and they hear that, and you know how that works. They run with it. And I think people just want to understand, you know what? It's not that type of process. Everybody kind of has the same standing as of right now. Yeah, Brian, you're right. Um, so here's what I will tell them is there's the only guarantee is that five highest rank conference champions will get bids into the playoff. They will be seated in the playoff. Absolutely. The top four of those champions will get a buy. And that's it. Uh, after that, it's, All right. uh, the next seven, it's about the ranking <laughs> yes, from the from the selection committee. Mm -hmm. And and that's a full uh, a look at the full body of work of a team. There's so many variables, yes. but that's what the selection committee is good at. Absolutely. They are they are 13 experts and they're going to look at teams for what they've done. 
And there, there's no guarantees for anybody. I don't care sure. what conference you're in. Uh, but we do know the five champions, the five highest ranked champions are will going get to in. be in. Absolutely. Right? That's, that's the only sort of guarantee here. Absolutely. One last question, sir. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier about st- the eye test and strength of schedule. Obviously, those are going to be part of part what, of it. You yeah. know, part of the and there's a, a, a wide range of things that, that the committee is going to be looking at to get teams in. Right? Will it be weighted more though? Because there's several teams in the Big Twelve this year that are going to actually play ten Power Five games. West Virginia plays eleven. Right. So are those going to be weighted higher when we talk about strength of schedule because of who they're playing? Well, I I think the way that it'll be viewed. I mean, on a uh, the way we look at strength of schedule mm-hmm. is just that. And right. if they play stronger teams, right. like you're describing, their strength of schedule is going to be absolutely. It's going to be higher, absolutely. and that's going to be to their advantage, especially if they win. Yes, right. Yes. So you play that that really uh, high uh, rate rated strength of schedule, and you're winning those games. Mm-hmm. That plays in your favor. I mean, sure. there is a definite advantage there. You know, as opposed to playing a a weaker strength of schedule and you even if you win that's also taken into account and right. and you know but it's it's all uh taken in and and the uh, selection committee really pulls every piece of data that they can get to make these decisions so Absolutely. uh but but you're in your description that's a that's a pretty good place to be right uh, a, <laughs> a really tough schedule and you've won that, that bodes well. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your time today. Yes, Thank sir. you for giving us a few minutes. That's all we needed. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. All right. Great. We'll be right back. Big 12 Insiders here soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Welcome back to Big 12 Insiders again. This is Brian Hanley with Cole Carmody. Well, look, uh, I think that might have cleared up a couple of things for us, Cole, on um, what we heard the executive director say Um what caught my eye was what he talked about with strength of schedule. Yes. You know, that to me, I think that was the most important thing. And it's kind of why I asked that question, because, again, we've got a couple of teams in this conference that are going to play 10 power four football games this year. Yeah. That doesn't happen often. Heck, like I mentioned, West Virginia plays 11, 11. which is insane. I said, so doesn't that have to have a higher weight? And he basically said, yeah, it yeah. does. So if that's the case, we're going to see at the end of the year again. You got to get there. Uh, you know, we can talk about it all we want. You got to get there. But I would be interested to see if that's actually going to hold the weight that he said it was going to hold. And I, I think it's important to note that, you know, they, they still look at the conferences. Correct. So K-State's playing 10. West Virginia's playing 11 power four. K-State's playing 10 conference mm-hmm. games. So how do they weigh the strength of the Big 12, right? That's Correct. the question. Correct. Because you could play 12 Big 12 games, and if they don't think the Big 12 is any good, right. then it won't matter. Right. And he, he kind of stayed away from he that a sure little did. bit, which is the company line. You Correct. wouldn't expect anything else. But you have to believe, right? You have to believe if, if they are truly looking at this right down the middle. And the Big 12 is involved in these, you know, these buys for a reason. Right. right? They, are, they are still a power conference. So if you have a Big 12 team that mm-hmm. plays 10 or 11 power four games and you have another conference team, so like the SEC, where they play nine. They don't even play nine. They, they play, play eight. They play eight conference games. Sometimes one power five That's opponent, right. power four opponent. You'd have to think that the Big 12 teams would have just as good a shot, if not a better chance, right. at strength of schedule. Now, right. just because they have a better strength of schedule doesn't mean they're a better team. No. But if they have a better strength of schedule, you would you would, you would would really hope that if it, if it all came down to one thing and it was strength of schedule, then a Big 12 team would have the nod over a team from the SEC. I think it would, um, but we'll see. We've seen things in the past. I mean, heck, look, last year you can say everything that you want. They took Alabama and Texas last year over Florida State for money. Yep. We all know that. That's not up for debate. You can't tell me that you're going to penalize a team for going, for going undefeated because their quarterback got hurt. I don't care what you thought about them. That you that that's, They took them because of money. Okay, fine. Well, now that we're up to 12 teams, are you going to do the same thing? Is it going to change? You know, he mentioned earlier, and we didn't get this on the interview, but he talked in his press conference, you know, about um, geography. Mm-hmm. He talked about the geography of a team and the size, almost like the the size of the city and could they handle the hotel capacity, which I thought, well, hold on a second. Manhattan, Kansas, Stillwater, Oklahoma. You know, it's not going to be because he mentioned weather. Yeah. You know, okay, well, what are we talking about here? 
it, it's the weather isn't going to be great there in December in either of those places. Now, yeah. even in Utah, you know, in Salt Lake City. Now, granted, Utah is a bigger city, so they'll have the hotel capacity. But if you're mentioning that in your interview, it's like, what are we doing here? Right. Are you going to penalize these teams and just say, OK, you know what, Cole? Yeah, I know you were fifth or you were seventh and you qualified for a home game. But that last week of the season, you know what? We're going to bump you down right. to nine so you don't have a home game. Yep. Yeah, I know you blew your team out, but yeah, yeah. we're going to bump you down to nine. You think any chance of that happening? Because I think there is. I, I think there is. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy we brought this up because after – uh, Rich Clark had his uh, interview on stage with everyone. I had a chance to to talk to him off camera, and, and I essentially asked the same question, right? Like, okay, so you brought this up, and, and I, mm -hmm. I related it back to baseball because for those that don't know, that is taken into consideration when regional sites are selected. Correct. If you do not have a big enough stadium to host four teams, then you're probably not going to be selected to host a regional. That's correct. They'll go with somebody else. And I, I simply just asked the question, like, is that – something that you guys have thought about like and he said no it does not matter there's 132 fbs schools if one of those schools can host they will host and right. we will be in contact with them throughout the entire duration of the season give them a little heads up if it's looking like hey looks like you might win your conference or you might be one of those you know six teams that are going to host um just a heads up you, you but you better get ready right and so i don't necessarily know if i believe that but could you imagine how horrible it would be mm. if oklahoma state or if k-state at the end of the season one of those schools in the big 12 that's kind of just located out there on an island they said hey you get to play US, US, usc or ucla well i could totally see the college football playoff selection committee seeing well it's an eight nine game we can justify the team that is going to be able to host more people in the bigger stadium you know it's going to be more conclusive to make this more of a gigantic event I could totally see them yeah. flipping. And, and and I don't know if people would bat an eye, and I'm sure the fan bases would get frustrated, but think about the economic opportunity you're also taking away from these places yes. that rely on gaming. And like – yeah, you're right, Cole. You know, uh, it, it would it would definitely be horrible. But look, it happened to TCU. TCU blows out a team fifty five to three, all in their third, and then next thing you know, they get pushed back to fifth, and they're not in the college football playoff. Now I know that was several years ago, but we just saw it. Like I mentioned before, we just saw this same type of thing happen last year. So I don't know. Look, agendas are all over the place. I get that part, uh, but at some point if everything is supposed to be about student athletes and the fans, more importantly, then just make it fair for the, for everybody. Make it about the fans. Cool. You know, if life was fair, then but there you it, go. It just, it doesn't, it just always come around back to it that. Does. I it mean, does. goodness gracious, like, this whole college football playoff thing is going to be outstanding for the sport. Yes, it is. But like he said in his press conference, they have to get this right. They have to get it right. They cannot afford to get this wrong no. because the future of the sport is literally in their hands. Yes, it is. And I really enjoyed your conversation with him. I'm happy that we got that set up yeah. because I mean, this is a guy who his life is going to be extremely stressful for about uh, nine or ten months of the year <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well thanks cole for taking the time to, to talk to us today man uh like i said uh big 12 media days it was incredible day two uh dion uh rich clark a lot of stuff that we we got to take part in today so glad you came on i appreciate it and again everybody remember to like follow subscribe all that good stuff and especially leave all those comments we appreciate you this is the big 12 insiders this has been a GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street production. Please support this show by subscribing to this YouTube channel or follow us on your favorite podcast platform.